Hello, Aslam class. It is Friday, the 22nd of January, and today's English lesson, we are moving away from instructional writing, and we are going to move on to our chron non-chronological report writing. Uh, before we go on to the video and go to the, to the in-depth of the lesson today, I would just like to say thank you for everyone who's posted their hot task uh, onto Tapestry. I've been really impressed with the work that you have um, that you have um, produced. Uh, lots of features of instructional writing in all your work. Uh, some of you may need it to just proofread through your work just to make sure your punctuation is correct and in the right places. But on the whole, I was very impressed. And uh, for a lot of you, it was your best piece of writing that you've done all year round. So uh, well, well done to you. This round of applause is for you. Okay, right, let's move on to our uh, lesson for today. <clears throat> and our lesson for today, we are going to be focusing on our new sort of area of writing, which is a non-chronological report. And the whole point of today's lesson is for you to understand what a non-chronological report is, and we're going to go through some of the key vocabulary of the... Uh, of what we're going to be writing about. So what is a non-chronological report? Well, it's a piece of text that isn't written in time order. It's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Because chronological means in time order. When we put non in front of it, it means we don't have to put it in time order. So what happens is uh, these, these reports are tended to be put into different sort of chapters and settings. So rather than saying, right, this happened first, then this, then this, then this, they may sort of, for example, um, the first chapter may be all about the army. The next chapter may be about the, all the emperors. The next chapter may be about civilians. The next chapter may be about Roman technology. So if we're reading a, a, a Roman book like that, and that wouldn't be in uh, chronological order, uh, that would be in an order, you know, they categorize things into sections and some things, you know, some things, in, if you read something in the technology chapter, okay, uh, that may have happened before you read something in the emperor's uh, section. So non-chronological report means it is not in time order. Now, the purpose of it is that it can be read in any order. So you don't have to start at the beginning and go through a timeline. If you want to find out information about a Roman emperor or a Roman battle or Roman civilians, you just go to that specific area. It's written to give other people information, very useful for doing research and studying. As always, with all writing, it has paragraphs. They contain introductions, main bodies, and final paragraphs. And the reports do contain some specific features of writing. So let's have a look at some examples of non-chronological reports. Here, there's a report about Thomas Edison. And you can see here, we've got a bit of information here at the top that tells us his name, when he was born, and when he died. What he did, what did he invent? We get a bit of information about his school days here, and then his mathematical genius. There's a fact file here. So it, none of it is really set in stone in time order. So it's more sort of put into different sections and you can see how sort of colorful and imaginative that one is. Here's one about castle defenses. Castles were built for rich men, lords and kings and their families to live in. See, we've got a heading here, we've got subheadings, we've got diagrams and pictures to help us. Some of the writing <coughs> is in bold letters. That tells us that that is key vocabulary. You may find these in something called a glossary. A glossary is um, normally you find at the end of the book, uh, but sometimes you find it on the actual page. And they tell you, uh, a glossary is like a dictionary, basically. Then words that are in bold, you'll find in the glossary and it will tell you what that word means. Also in this one, we've got a did you know box at the bottom. So again, that is a specific feature of non-chronological writing. Again, none of this is written in time order. It's just given us information about tr the treasure book, right? a catapult and things like that. Here we've got one on giant pandas, okay? No chronological ordering here. We, we've got a bit of information about what pandas are. We then look at their habitat. We then look at their diets. We then look at their habits. And did you know, fun facts, rhetorical questions. Again, there is no chronological order here. We have grouped our information about the pandas in sort of subjects. So their habitats, their diets, their habits, none of that is chronological. 
So hopefully you would have seen some of the features there and you may have seen things that I haven't picked out on yet. So over the next lesson, we're gonna look into the features of chrono non-chronological reports in a bit more detail. Now let's have a look at our text map uh, for this uh, half term, uh, for, for this topic, sorry. So it's Boudicca, the queen of the Insini tribe. Have you ever wondered what makes a good leader? Read on to find out more about a famous leader who led a tribe in a rebellion against the Roman Empire. Who was Boudicca? Boudicca was the joint ruler of the British Insini tribe who lived in the region of Britain now known as East Anglia, with her husband, Prasitacor, I can pronounce this correctly, Prasitacaeus. Under Roman law, Boudicca, as a woman, had no right to inherit her husband's property. Prasitacaeus hoped to safeguard Boudicca's position by making an agreement to leave half his property to Rome. In 59 or 60 AD, Prasitacaeus died. And when Boudicca attempted to defy the Romans who had come to seize her property, they had her beaten and attacked her daughters. Her physical characteristics. Boudicca was a very tall woman with a mass of long red hair. She had fierce eyes and a harsh voice. Boudicca was a lady who was noticed. There is a picture of Boudicca here on the side. It's an artist impression. They didn't have cameras back in them days. Boudicca's army. Boudicca rose up and staged a rebellion against the Romans. She brought together tribes to fight against the Romans and tried to force them out of Britain. Boudicca led many attacks against the Roman army and Roman villages. Her army greatly outnumbered that of the Romans. It was in her final battle that Boudicca met with defeat. Although her army was large, they were not as skilled and as organized as the Roman army. Boudicca exemplified a great leader. She was fierce, brave, and fought for what was right. And then there's some fast facts here as well. And then the name Boudicca means the victory, means Victoria or victory. So some interesting things there. Now, key vocabulary, we're gonna go through these and then we're going to uh, go your turn, my turn. So we've got battle, rebellion, attack, defeat, Romans, agreement, East Anglia, and Inseni. Okay, so a battle. A battle is a fight between two groups to fight or struggle uh, or, or to fight or struggle against. So a battle was when two, two groups get together, maybe sometimes more, and they, they end up having a fight over a piece of land or something like that. Rebellion, that is to fight against rule, to disobey authority. So in this picture here, you can see people who are not very happy with their, with their um, local government maybe, so they're rebelling, they're breaking the rules and um, you know, causing disruption. Attack, to hurt someone or cause harm to someone. You see in this picture here, this guy here is going to attack this Roman soldier here. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, defeat, to win against someone or to beat someone, okay? Uh, and if you're that person who is on the receiving end of that beating, you have been defeated. And you can see in this picture here, Virgil van Dyke, who's the Liverpool captain, this is his expression after Aston Villa defeated Liverpool 7-2 uh, in the Premier League earlier this season. The Romans. So the Romans were a group of people. Uh, they, were, uh, they originally came from Italy, which is here, and they expanded their empire across most of Europe and into northern parts of Africa and the Middle East and also Britain. Uh, the Romans were an empire that invaded uh, uh, England in 43 AD. And this picture here shows what the Roman Empire looked like <coughs> in 117 AD. An agreement. This is when you come to an understanding. So more than one group of people or two people, they may come to an understanding and agree on something. So um, that's left one. Ooh. East Anglia. East Anglia is where Boudicca and her family lived. And if you have a look on a map of uh, Great Britain here, East Anglia is this blue part. It's that kind of the hump of, 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 of Great Britain. So that's where it is. If you're wondering where it was, uh, it helps locate where it was. And, you know, in Boudicca's story, she traveled all the way across. And of course, back in them days, you had to walk a lot. Incini, so the Celtic tribe led by King Prasetokur, Prasutagas and then Boudicca afterwards. 
And this is uh, Boudicca again. She was the queen of the Insini tribe. And then here's a picture or an image of Prasatakis, who is the husband of Boudicca and the ruler of the Insini tribe. Okay, so there's our key vocabulary for today. What your tasks are for today are, number one, can you complete the sentences below to just here, given uh, using the vocabulary that we have just looked at and we have just defined. So there are five sentences there. I expect everyone to get onto that and do that. If you need that a little bit more of a push and you want to do a bit more and get a bit more of a challenge in, create your own definitions of the meaning of the words and that way it will help you remember them better if you've created your own definitions. And if you really want to push yourselves, do task three. Once you've created your own definition of the words, create new sentences that include the vocabulary words. Okay, so if uh, I'm going to stop sharing the screen there. So good luck with your work. And if you do need any help, please go on to Teams. There is a section there that now says questions for Mr. Langford. If you have any questions about the work, that's where you ask and write to me. Okay, guys, see you in the next video.